Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. These are my first impression, non-spoiler thoughts of Ralph Breaks the Internet, formerly known as Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. <laughs> and now it's just officially Ralph Breaks the Internet. And I enjoyed it very, very much overall. Uh, the story is about uh, Ralph and Vanellope. They've been friends for six years inside the arcade. And Wreck-It Ralph is very content with his life now. There's a pretty set routine. He's friends with everybody in the arcade, uh, so he's very happy. But Penelope, she's grown uh, tired of the complacency. She knows her video game all too well. She does all the tricks and all the tracks and all the uh, uh, little things here and there, and she, she wants a little more. So one day, her uh, arcade cabinet, Sugar Rush, gets physically damaged, and the owner of the arcade doesn't want to pay for the uh, part to replace... Uh, and fix the game uh, cabinet because uh, it just it's more expensive than what the game brings into the arcade for a year. So Ralph and Vanellope go into the internet to try to uh, find a way to raise money and get that part, essential part, for her game console. But during their adventure, they learn some new lessons about friendship, and it's a very nice uh, experience overall. Uh, now, I saw the Emoji movie, so this film, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, is much better than the Emoji movie, but because I've seen the Emoji movie, I've seen the idea of, oh, what if, you know, we, you could see a physical Facebook and Twitter or Pinterest or eBay or, you know, blah, 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 you know, what if, you know, the, the Internet was real? I've seen that already, so imagine someone tells you a joke. That was pretty a decent joke. And then, you know, several weeks or even years later, someone tells the same joke, but says it much better. So, you know, we get a bigger laugh and more fun. Uh, but you have heard the joke already. So while you can definitely tell, yeah, that was a better uh, delivery of the joke, you heard the joke. So there is some just uh, diminishing returns. And that's how it is with me in this film. I, you know, I saw that concept already. So, you know, as, as cool as it is to see all these little Easter eggs throughout the entire film, you know, there's some diminishing returns to, returns to me. Another problem I had is that uh, my two favorite sub-characters, uh, Fix-It Felix Jr. and Sergeant Calhoun, you know, the uh, two uh, lovebirds, the folks that uh, fell in love with the first movie, they are barely in the film. <laughs> barely. Now, with, you know, new movies, they're going to introduce new characters, they're going to new adventures, that's fine. But I still was looking forward to seeing some of the uh, arcade characters uh, in the movie a lot more, especially uh, Calhoun and uh, uh, Felix Jr. They're barely in it. You know, think of the Toy Story movies. Even though the movies are mainly about uh, Buzz and Woody, you still get uh, Sleeky Dog and, you know, uh, Rex and Mr. Mr. Potato Head and, you know, the aliens. And these are that scattered throughout the movie. Where here, no, they're, they're barely in it. So I was greatly disappointed by that. Uh, but other than that, I was very happy. Uh, there's the main new character that's introduced is called Shank. Uh, very important that you pronounce it properly because I mispronounced it pro improperly <laughs> and, and brought out a whole different meaning. <laughs> no, so Shank is played by Gal Gadot. And at first I thought this was going to be sort of a, uh, you know, a one friend versus another friend sort of situation. But it's not, not really. Uh, Shank is very cool character uh, without uh, drawing too much attention, too much of, hey, it's about me, it's about me, you know, I'm, I'm the main character now. No, it's not like that at all. Also something that I like that even though the promos made it seem like this was going to be some type of ultra sales pitch for Disney left and right, the Disney section isn't that big. It's just about the second act. So it's there and it's joyous and wonderful, but it's not the whole, you know, uh, Disney, this Disney, wall to wall, start from finish. Uh, Disney, Disney, as the, uh, the trailers imply. And speaking of trailers, uh, hopefully you didn't see too much of the princesses in the, all the promotions leading up to this because that's the best part. The best part are the princess sections. Uh, so I, I stared away from them after the first uh, presentation of the princesses, uh, and I'm glad I did because those were the best parts of the film, uh, hands down. So yeah, uh, other than the personal disappointment of uh, my favorite secondary characters not being in the movie that, uh, that much, I enjoyed this overall. There are two post-credit scenes, one during the credits and one at the very, very end. Uh, now, the 
uh, one at the end is brand new, but the one in the uh, middle of the credits is technically not new if you saw the trailers, but they do add a couple extra seconds to justify why it was placed in that part of the movie, and I enjoyed that very much. And also something that I enjoyed to learn was that um, most of the princesses are voiced by their original actresses, like Mandy Moore coming back to reprise her role as a Rapunzel, I believe. So that was cool also. So yeah, lots of fun. Bring the kids. Other than missing out on those characters from the first movie, uh, this is a really wonderful time overall. So I highly, highly, highly recommend Ralph Breaks the Internet. <laughs> Okay, so those are my thoughts. I would love to know your thoughts. Be sure to post in the comments, like in the comment section, non-spoiler thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hill Knight, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.